guys, today I want to share with you some of the tips and tricks um, for having a French Bulldog and some of the things to consider prior to getting one. Um, so, um, here we have Jax. He is a 9 month old purebred French Bulldog. Uh, he has an adorably large head with a relatively small body. He weighs at 18 pounds um, and at 9 months it's a very healthy weight for a French Bulldog. Um, as far as temperament goes, he can be stubborn, he's very uh, gentle, very playful, um, he's very very curious, loves to explore, we love going shopping together, um, he follows me everywhere, he won't even leave my sight when I use the washroom. Um, just overall, he's a great companion. So for cleaning, um, we he has relatively short hair, so we haven't taken him um, out for grooming. But we do take care um, we do take care of all his grooming needs at home. Um, and what we use is this Live Clean Baby Formula um, Tearless Shampoo and Wash for babies on him. And this works great because there are no added chemicals and no fragrances. It's okay to use on dogs. Um, and this has worked great for us. Um, and after showering him, what I would typically do is use an ear cleaning solution to help clean his ears. So it is very important to clean Frenchie's ears frequently because they do have that bat ear and it tends to um, store a lot of earwax and impurities in their ears. So it's very important that you clean their ears, otherwise um, they could be prone to ear infections. And what I do is I squeeze a reasonable amount of this um, ear cleaning solution into his ear. Usually I'll, after showering him, I'll hold him like this, squeeze this in, and hold down his ear, shake it for about 30 seconds so that the solution can clean his ear. Then after about 30 seconds of shaking it, I'll use a cotton swab to uh, get rid of all the remainder ear cleaning solution as well as ear wax from his ears. After that, we move on to teeth brushing. So what we've been using is just a regular flavored um, toothpaste such as this. This is um, peanut butter flavored, I believe. So this is the peanut butter flavor uh, dog toothpaste. Um, and what we do is we typically use a finger brush to get to the inside of his mouth and brush it out. And um, we've also been uh, trying out the conventional human toothbrush. Um, we just find that this cleans a little better than this little rubber uh, finger toothbrush here. Uh, but both of them work well. And af after um, we're done with the toothpaste, we will uh, spray this plaque spray on his gums and his teeth. And we usually do this um, every two or three days. So same thing with brushing. After brushing, we will spray this on to make sure that his teeth and gum, gums are clean. Um, it's also very important to clean your dog's teeth. Um, a lot of dogs have plaque buildup or cavities when they get older. So uh, brushing regularly can help prevent some of the gum diseases or um, cavities once they get older. Um, the last step in this grooming is that I will apply the paw and nose solution onto his paws and nose and this just provides a small protective layer um, to help protect his nose and protect his paws. Um, what we also do is we clip his nails at home. So this is just a regular uh, dog nail clipper you can find. Uh, this can be used on cats and dogs, I believe. And we just got the small size because his paws are not too large. Um, so it just gets a little bit of use to, um, it just takes the dog a little bit of time to get used to a nail clipper. It doesn't hurt them and it's super easy. It's similar to clipping a, nail, a human's nail. You just have to make sure that you're not touching the pink area of their nail because that's where the skin is. And you can just go ahead and clip it. And we find that this saves us so much money. So we spend about $12 in getting this tool here. but. If we were to get him out to the vet or to a groomer to get his nails clipped, 
that's about $15 each time. So this is really great. It's not too difficult to clip your dog's nails at home once he gets used to it. Um, so another thing I want to mention is the flea medication or prevention. Um, if your dog goes outside, which he or she does, um, it is very important to get flea medicine. Um, this is just a preventative measure and you apply this on the, their back and neck about once a month and this helps prevent um, fleas, ticks, mosquito and lice. So it is very, very helpful. Um, we originally, when we first got him, we did get the same um, canine Aventex too from the vet, which costed about $120. But later on, we were able to find it in PetSmart and it was greatly discounted. So we bought um, a couple of boxes at $80. So if you try to find it at your local pet store, which they may or may not carry, you can usually find it at a price which is cheaper than how much your vet would sell it to you for. Um, and this text too um, was recommended by the vet. He, he told us that this is more effective than the other uh, products out there in the market. So we trusted his work and we've been uh, getting this brand, the same brand, same product, and had no issue with fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, anything of that sort. So this has been really great. Um, another thing to pay attention to when having a Frenchie is the climate. Uh, Frenchies are very prone to extreme climate change. Um, such as extreme heat, extreme cold, they don't like either. They don't do well in um, high heat because they do have a flat nose or rather a flat face. So when it's very hot, it can become very um, hard for them to breathe. And when it's very cold because of the length of the fur, they don't prefer the cold so they freeze easily. And I've read that um, Frenchies are prone to getting frostbites on their ears and even their uh, toes. So in the summer, when it gets anything above 25 degrees, we don't take him out. So on the days that are very hot, I would take him out very early in the morning before it gets too humid or very late at night when it gets more chilly. Um, and during the day, he'll only go out for potty breaks for about no more than 10 minutes. Um, so that's the summer. And when it gets cold um, in the winter, he does have to wear a, a jacket. Um, and we have bought these little um, light fleece sweaters just for layering. And when it's not too cold, he's okay to just wear um, a sweater such as this one. Uh, you can find them on Amazon at your local pet store. Um, they don't cost too much, but they're very helpful in keeping your pet warm. Um, we also have a little puffer jacket for him. So this, he can, uh, this, he puts his arms through. Um, it's, it's a button up, so it's easy to put on and off. Um, and this keeps him warm. We also have a jacket from Canada Pooch, but it's more of a windbreaker, so that definitely needs layering. Um, another thing that is very, very important for a puppy in the winter is kept keeping their paws away from salt because salt can damage and burn their paws. So um, if where you if it snows where you live and they have they um, salt the area, you must put on booties for your puppy. Um, so we have tried a couple of different um, puppy socks or puppy shoes. We have tried the little balloon ones, the ones that are made of rubber shaped like a boot. Um, and these ones here are the Mutt Lux. So this is the this is a brand, Mutt Lux, and it comes in the nylon bag so as this. Um, and this is much easier, and I found that this is much easier to put on because it's shaped, um, because it's, it's like a, it's similar to a sock. Um, you can just put their, their leg through or their foot through and just tighten it like that. So it's much easier to put on than the balloon socks I find. And these are a little bit more expensive, but I think they definitely work a lot better. Um, 
you can get more uses out of these than the balloon socks. Um, however, they are made of suede, so they're not waterproof. But as long as you're, you keep their paws away from the salt, I think that's the most important. Um, so these work very well. Uh, we recently also got these ones. Um, these are just like a sock with the little um, plastic layer at the bottom so that it keeps your feet from getting uh, wet. We haven't tried these yet, but I suspect they will work also just because they're easier to put on. But again, it probably won't be water, uh, completely waterproof. But anything to keep their paws away from the salt. Um, so besides the climate, um, another thing to note is that because uh, most Frenchies have breathing issues, um, it is best not to wear conventional over the neck leash. Those leashes may interfere with their airflow, so, so it is best to get a harness that goes on their upper back so that it doesn't interfere with their air, uh, with their breathing. Um, so that is what I do for him in the summer and winter. Um, as far as food, we try to keep it more natural. Um, he does eat home cooked meals, and typically I would make, um, I would have a main source of protein, which may be chicken breast, um, turkey, fish, or beef. And then I will add, typically I'll add a uh, beef liver carrots, chickpea, um, broccoli, and some other vegetables, depending on what's available. Um, so that is his main meal, and I usually feed him two times a day. Um, and along with his meal, because we cook for him, so he may not get all the necessary nutrients and calcium. So I will add, um, so I've been adding this joint support from Thrive, um, and then it has calcium MSM and some other minerals in it to support uh, joint health. As well, I add um, coconut oil, apple cider vinegar um, once a day to his meal. So that's what I feed him, and I can and I can provide you guys with the recipe um, and later on in the clip. As far as snacks go, um, he gets rabbit ears, rabbit feet. Um, this may be off-putting for some owners, but when I've done the research, I found that because the soft bones or the actual bones are intact in these snacks, it is actually really great for them in providing calcium. Um, and also the fur on the rabbit, on the rabbit ear and the rabbit feet provides uh, fiber to them, so it helps them flush out their system. And these are super crunchy. They're I think they're freeze dry, so they don't smell. Sit. And he just knows to take it to his bed or take it to his yoga mat and have it there. And some of the more conventional treats that we give him are just um, freeze dry beef liver fillets and beef fillets. And they're only and they're a hundred percent natural. Only one ingredient, um, no preservatives, no chemicals added. And when he gets bored, um, I usually give him a bully stick or um, some type of a chew. I try the Himalayan cheese chew, which is a hundred percent natural and digestible uh, for dogs. So that's been great in keeping him busy when he's bored at home. So next I want to talk about training your Frenchie. Um, as some of you may already know, Frenchies are extremely food motivated. So um, to train Jax, it wasn't too difficult because of how food motivated he was. Um, anytime we wanted him to learn a new trick or learn a new skill, we just had to have a treat in hand and along with some patience, he had no issue learning the trick. So far, he knows to sit, to stand, to give paw, to high five, um, to lay down, to play dead, to stay still, um, 
And right now we're trying to teach him to keep a tree on his head and stay still. So that's a work in progress. Um, besides that, they're super smart, very easy to train as long as you have some patience and some treats that they like. Um, we didn't have, we never had to take him to puppy class because we were just able to teach him everything ourselves. Um, so to potty train him, it takes us three days of consistently taking him out for potty every hour to two hours for him to learn that it's good to go outside. Um, when we first got him, he was three months old, so he was already pee pad trained. Um, of course, he's had accidents here and there, but nothing major. Um, the thing that I want to mention is that for Frenchies during their puppyhood, um, we had a lot of issue getting him to we had a lot of issue getting him to walk um, because I guess he would get tired easily. Um, he was a little bit manipulative. He wanted us to carry him if we if we went far. Um, he wasn't super. He wasn't a huge fan of walking too much. Um, but that may also be because his legs are quite stubby and it takes some time to grow and to develop the muscle strength um, for long periods of exercise. That leads me to the last point which is exercise needs. Um, Frenchies are great apartment dogs because they don't require too much exercise. I would say they're typically medium to low energy dogs. Um, but we were able to get away with um, maybe walking him for an hour total when he was young per day. Um, just really early in the morning, go for a long walk, about 30 to 45 minutes, which tires him out for the rest of the day. And he's good to be um, alone for a couple of hours during the day. Um, since he's gotten older, we noticed that um, he can go further, he can walk longer. Um, we were able to go hiking with him, um, and he's been able to keep up. High five. Paw. 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 Good boy. Down. Good. Bang. Juju bang. Good job. Up, 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 no, up, up, good. Okay, sit, stay, 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 stay. Good boy. Okay.